It's day two of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Today's theme will focus on law enforcement and crime. Well, yesterday, the U.S. economy took center stage, and CBS News did a little fact-checking. So I want to bring in our Anna Werner now uh, with more on which statements were true and which ones were false. We heard there were a lot of speakers on stage yesterday, Anna, so I'm really curious about what you guys have uncovered. During her convention speech yesterday, uh, Senator Katie Britt said that Trump presided over the strongest economy in history quite a claim. Uh, is that claim supported by any national data? Yeah, as you said, the uh, fact-checking team's been hard at work. And, you know, this is something that former President Trump often claims, including at the presidential debate in June. But it's not true when you look through many metrics used to judge economic performance. Just a couple of his examples. Uh, GDP growth has been higher under President Biden, also was higher in the 1960s and 1950, according to the World Bank. Uh, also, the stock market had higher percentage gains in the S&P 500 during the first terms of President's Obama. Obama, Clinton, and Eisenhower. Uh, wages did go up under Trump's presidency, however. So it's worth uh, listening to some of these claims and uh, trying to consider uh, whether they're accurate or not, Amory. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got another one for you. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin said that women and minorities saw record low unemployment under Trump. Is, is that considered true, partially true, false? Yeah, so this is partially true, right? So across those demographics, the unemployment rate has been comparable during both President Biden and former President Trump's administrations. But lower unemployment for women and Black Americans, uh, it's been lower under Biden than Trump. And for Hispanic and Latino Americans, unemployment reached a low of 3.9% under both administrations. So that's a bit more of what we'd call partially true, a little bit more of a mixed picture. And there's a lot of context there you know, to consider rather than just a simple blanket statement, right? You have to look at all the details in that picture, which um, when you're making a convention speech is not something you typically uh, are going to have the time to get into, right? Right. I have another blanket statement um, from Youngkin for you. Uh, he said that Trump's presidency had high growth and low inflation compared to Biden's presidency, which has low growth and high inflation. Well, we, a lot of, we've been talking a lot about the inflation. But can you explain why this statement probably needs additional context? Right. So our fact checkers found that that claim is misleading. It's true that inflation was low during Trump's presidency. Um, inflation under President Biden did peak higher in 2022, but it's sim since dropped to similar numbers as under Trump. We're talking around 3%. So they're calling that claim uh, misleading about uh, about, you know, sort of this high growth, low inflation sort of claim. OK, and then one more for you. Senator Marsha Blackburn said that Biden would let Trump's 2017 tax cuts expire, leading to the biggest tax increase in U.S. history. Uh, where do we land on that statement? Yeah, so that statement is misleading. And I think that, you know, that is something that a lot of people at home would focus on right? Tax cuts impact everybody. But what the Biden administration has actually proposed is extending the Trump tax cuts for families earning under $400,000 a year annually. So basically, they would extend those tax cuts. If you earn less than $400,000 a year, they would extend those Trump tax cuts. Mm. What he has uh, proposed, the White House budget plans show, is that President Biden does want to raise taxes on corporations and high-income earners. Um, high-income earners of the type that most of us will never see those kinds of earnings, say, for example, the top 1%. So um, that is a misleading statement. And I think for a lot of people, that's something that you know, you really want to be paying attention to those kinds of points because those are the points that affect you. And um, when a statement is misleading like that, it really doesn't tell you the whole picture. Um, so obviously, Anne-Marie, that's, that's going to be a key uh, for a lot of people that a lot of people are going to pay attention to. Yeah, that's the challenge that all politicians have when it comes to the economy. We all care about the economy. We vote according to how we feel about the economy, but it doesn't fit on a bumper sticker. It takes a lot of explaining. Yeah. Um, Anna, thank yeah. you very much.